on their YouTube addiction or or of bed rest or the ABC of the week. Uh, and although I've been very indisposed in recent weeks, I've been able to continue listening to audiobooks and so I should have a few vid discussion videos um, coming up uh, in the next uh, few weeks and also 2023 because frighteningly we're not that far away from that now uh, so um, I have to say that um, this um, the book I've decided to discuss for this video I came about or I found in a rather unusual way I'd started actually but I was looking up uh, a vintage reality TV series called Bratcam uh, that um, I used to watch many years ago where uh, um, um, British teenagers were sent to one of these American wilderness therapy camps in an effort or as a last last ditch attempt to reform their behaviour. I discovered in more recent years that these um, therapeutic camps have um, or some of the people attending them have alleged that they have experienced um, like abuse from staff or that the regime uh, itself was abusive um so um and there is in fact a campaign which i discovered called breaking code silence which was what made me look at the book or how i came to find the book in the first place um but because i originally was looking for a book that was um, a more sort of an account uh, from an individual standpoint more than um, like the entertain like um, the therapeutic environment being used for entertainment value so um, that's how I came to find the sorry i'm having some random pain here so i'll just stop the video and i'll start again in a second i apologize for that brief but agonizing interlude um but anyway back to the uh, book like i um said i was originally looking for a book that talked about the uh, in possibly an individual's experience of being in one of these wilderness therapy camps because I'd come across the campaign uh, Breaking Code Silence that talked about some alleged abuse that was or that had occurred at some of these well-known therapy camps um, over the years. Uh, and it was what I could um, source uh, from UK bookshops was relatively limited because we don't, I think, have that kind of wilderness therapy type activity here, or at least not on a large scale that I have um, been able to find myself. So um, I came across this novel be called Wild Bird by Wendelin van der Rand. and um, I read the first uh, two chapters, or rather I found a YouTube video with somebody who read the first two chapters 
um, of the book, but there was no more in audio format. And I tried at my local library and on the usual Audible and uh, Scribd websites and all the other um, book websites that I would normally use and I was unable to find it either in um, an ebook format uh, or audio um, very easily so I did some further digging over a couple of days I originally bought the book in paper format with an idea of possibly scanning it in except it's for, uh, like scanning it into a computer so I could read it uh, but it's quite a sort of long book even though the chapters are quite short um, but in the end uh, although I, I purchased the book in paperback format I was able to find the um, book on I think it was audiobooks.com uh, and um, that I was able to download the book as a one-off purchase on one of, on their app uh, and listen to it um listen to it through listen to it that way because I, I tried to read the book in uh, paperback and because I'm having problems keeping like visually tracking more at the moment particularly like when I be first began to film this review this morning it's it can be quite bad in the morning um i decided this wasn't going to be a particularly enjoyable way of reading a book so i took the plunge purchased the book it was i think it was slightly more expensive than audible but i was determined to read this book by this point because it it's got some fairly good reviews and even though the age range is, I think, young adult literature. Uh, and I think in the US it might be on some uh, school curriculum. Um, um, you know, like English uh, syllabus. Um, but I decided I was going to read it and I downloaded it and I listened to the book almost in one sitting and while I think it has its weaknesses in that it's fairly cliched like 14 year old like when we first meet the protagonist uh Ren Clements um she's being um she's um woken up and being transported to this wilderness therapy camp or um, some of the people that have talked about in the Breaking Code Silence campaign have um, discussed it in terms of being gooned um, like she, uh, in the book she's coming round after having um, taken illicit substances so um in that sense it's fairly sort of cliched and um the book is told in a backwards and forwards type format where you get to see, uh, Ren's story in the present and Ren's backstory and it's sort of like she is having a fairly okay life and then the family are uprooted from one area to another and Ren struggles to make friends as the large crux of the story and this is how she kind of falls in with the wrong crowd and how her life spirals out of control that bit was the bit I found very sort of cliche um but I suppose um it would be how you would expect somebody to end up in 
one of these situations where they would be sent to um, a therapy camp. I enjoyed, oh, I enjoyed some of the vivid descriptions of the scenery in Utah, which is the, where the camp is that she ends up being placed in. And I, I've spent some time in Utah, so a, a similar age to... Um, the age Ren is in the book so it was very nice to think back to that and it gave me a sort of vivid picture of the landscape um, she found herself in which and it was nice for me to be able to remember being that well and visiting that kind of place so um that I enjoyed and the book also brings up very uh, well themes of acceptance, forgiveness, love and um, makes you question um, what, is it, what it means to belong and what it means to be true to yourself and what you believe in. So, um, uh, in a nutshell, I think I would quite, I would highly recommend uh, reading it if you can, or uh, at least um, possibly directing uh, younger readers to, you know, between, I'd say, about 12 and 15, I think is probably when the, the age at which the book was written for. But I know there are many um, people that still enjoy YA literature uh, long after that, um, uh, or many years later. So, um, I mean, books, I never think a book should be limited to a particular age range. I mean, look at Harry Potter and that went, you know, that's read by adults or has been read by adults all over the world and continues to be. And I definitely think that as an adult, you can get something out of this book. And as a young person, I think you definitely would because I think it's a way of um, sort of exploring some of the darker themes that can come up in um in terms of growing up in a very peer pressured environment and world that we're in now so um with that note i'll uh, end my discussion for today's video and i will see you in my next one bye